I welcome you all to the third module of the course title Psychology of Emotion Theory and Applications. So, the third module is about Physiology of Emotions. So, in this module uh, we will have two lectures and uh, both the lectures will deal with uh, how what are the physiological changes that are associated with the concept of emotion or when we experience diverse emotions. So, today's lecture is uh, uh, lecture number 6 overall and the first lecture of module 3. So, today we will uh, more specifically talk about how emotion influences our body. So, uh, before we talk about uh, today's lecture, let me give you a brief recap of what we have discussed in the uh, last lecture that is lecture 5. Uh, in the lecture 5, we have discussed more specifically how cultural belief system or cultural experiences shapes emotional experiences or in the expression of emotion, understanding of emotion. Uh, in that context, we have discussed you know diverse uh, researches, empirical evidences associated with culture specific expression of emotion, uh, where we have found that although there are universal ex uh, you know, expression of some basic emotions are there, but still there are subtle cultural differences and culture can influence expression of emotions in the, co in the context of facial expression as well as the intensity in which uh, we express emotion the frequency of certain emotions are more in certain culture as compared to other. And also we have found that some researches also showed that antecedents of events associated with emotions are can also differ across cultures. So, the major reason that we have discussed why there are cultural differences in the expression of emotion, uh, the some one of the primary reason was the display rule that we have talked about where the norms of the society or norms of the culture shapes how we express emotions, uh, how we interpret an emotions, our surroundings, people around us, we see and learn how to uh, express, how to suppress an emotion, how, in what proportion we need to express emotion and so on. So, the display rule is one of the reason why there are a lot of differences in the cultural expression of emotion. There are also theories that talks about basically, you know, the concept of dialect theory of expression of emotion that says, uh, just like languages also differ, the same language can differ in, the, in, in terms of how we pronounce certain words, little bit of differences. Uh, similarly, the expression of emotion even though the overall the basic uh, prototype of expression of emotion could be same for the basic emotions, but subtle ex ways a uh, lot of emotions can differ in terms of expression of emotion. Facial muscles, uh, there may be differences here and there. So, we have seen evidences of all these things in the uh, in the last lecture. Another explanatory model that talks about why there are differences across culture is uh, the dimension of individualism and collectivism uh, of culture. So, cultures can be broadly defined in terms of its characteristics or traits. So, one way of looking at it that some cultures are very individualistic where focus is more on independent self, more focus on your own life achievement and so on. Whereas, some cultures are more towards collectivist nature where the focus is more on societal cohesions, group, the life in the group and so on. So, the focus is given on the other aspects of life that is interdependent aspect of one's life. So, that can also explain those broad characteristics of culture can kind of influence how you express emotions or how you interpret emotions. Uh, so, the people in the individualistic culture may prone to express emotions more intensely. They may be more comfortable in expressing certain emotions like pride and so on. Whereas, people in the collectivist culture are may be less prone or may less likely to express emotions such as pride and so on because of the how collective nature of or the norms of the culture. Uh, it shapes the way you express emotions and so on. At the end, we have discussed an um, uh, integrative theory which talks about why there are universal similarity as well as differences uh, uh, through the model of Ekman's neurocultural theory we have discussed, which basically says that you know that there are obviously you know universal aspects of uh, aspects to basic emotions in every culture these basic emotions are experienced. However, display rules of culture can kind of sometimes suppress or override because of practicing it again and again because of the norms of the culture can override certain expressions where there we see all these varied cultural differences. 
So, these are the some of the things that we have discussed. So, today we will be talking about uh, uh, how emotion influences your body particularly and the next lecture we will talk about how emotion influences your brain particularly. So, in today's lecture we will be focusing more on autonomic nervous system and how it is related to emotions. Uh, we will also talk about some of the hormones uh, that are very significantly associated with the experience of emotions. Uh, more specifically, we will talk about uh, hormones like adrenaline, cortisol, dopamine, serotonin, estrogen and testosterone. So, let us start today's lecture. So, emotions and the body is very strongly associated. Can you think of any strong emotions that did not involve your body at all? So, if you think about it, whenever you have experienced any emotion, particularly the strong emotions like anger, fear, you might have noticed that certain changes happens in your body immediately. So, it is not like you experience emotion now and after half an hour you experience certain changes in the body. Immediately there is a change in the body, certain changes you experience. So, so generally every emotion will have some impact on your body. What kind of changes it could happen? For example, your heartbeat may increase, your uh, skin temperature may change your breathing pattern may change. So, these are some of the indications that certain impact has happened in the body also. So, every strong emotion will have its kind of you know impact in the certain physiological changes and associated indicators in the body. So, we will see what are those important changes. So, emotion theorists have stressed the central role of the body in the emotional feeling. So, you cannot really avoid body bodily experiences when we talk about emotions. William James, one of the first proponent in the, in, in, in the theories of emotion, theorist uh, in the context of emotion said that physiological and behavioral changes are the feelings of the emotions. He gave too much importance on the physiological and behavioral changes that he defined emotions based on that only. He says emotion is nothing but those physiological changes. So, another uh, researcher uh, Damasio wrote that emotion use the body as the theatre. So, body is like their foundation where they all the expression of emotion happens. Emotions prepare the body for appropriate action. Why these changes happens? One of the signal or one of the indications of these changes is that it is preparing body to take certain actions. So, when you are fearful or afraid, uh, the certain changes happens in the body, heartbeat become faster. So, it's, it is giving you more energy to prepare with the situation either to run away or let us say if it is a dangerous situation or if possible to fight. So, the body is getting more energy, more activated uh, just to prepare, it is preparing your body to tackle the situation. The autonomic nervous system as well as hormones that circulate in the bloodstream autonomic nervous system, we will be talking little bit more detail, some of aspect of it we have already discussed that uh, part of nervous system which is most responsible for activation of the body or it controls all the aspects of the body which are beyond our control like heartbeat, breathing and so on which happens automatically because this is controlled by autonomic nervous system. There is no need for conscious intervention and hormones, lot of hormones that are released from the glands in the bloodstream they also actually causes all the physiological changes in the body. So, let us have a brief understanding of nervous system to kind of uh, to understand uh, what, what how nervous system actually is associated with the emotions. So, if you see this is the division of uh, nervous system. So, here nervous system uh, broadly is categorized as central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system primarily consists of brain and spinal cord. So, this is called central nervous system, your brain and the spinal cord, the long thread that goes from brain to the you know, spine that we call it. All the other aspects of nervous system are called peripheral nervous system. So, anything beyond all the nervous uh, nerves that are beyond brain and spinal cord are called peripheral nervous system. Again, this peripheral nervous system is again categorized under two major categories. One is somatic nervous system, one is autonomic nervous system. 
Now, the somatic nervous system actually you know it conducts nerve impulses from central nervous system, spinal cord and the brain to skeletal muscles. So, skeletal muscles. So, all the this for example, I can move my hand, I can walk, move my legs. So, these are all done by somatic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system is as the name suggests, it controls all the internal organs and glands. So, it conducts nerve impulses from the central nervous system like brain and uh, spinal cord to organs and glands. So, all the internal organs are kind of controlled by autonomic nervous system. This autonomic nervous system is again divided into two major categories. One is called sympathetic nervous system, one is called as parasympathetic nervous system. So, sympathetic nervous system is again is most important in the context of emotions because it is response, it is always associated with all the emotions, particularly whenever we get some physiological activation in the body. So, sympathetic nervous system kind of acts during emergency situations. So, whenever there is a danger in the situation, whenever we get nervous, panicked and so on, a lot of emotions or stressful experiences, this is the system that at activates the body uh, and mobilizes body resources. So, it mediates fight or flight response. So, it prepares the body to fight or run away, flight. So, this is immediately you can feel it that there is a changes in the body, particularly because of this sympathetic uh, nervous system activation. Parasympathetic part of nervous system does the opposite of sympathetic nervous system. It tries to cools down the body because if sympathetic nervous system remains active for long time, the body will run out of energy and it will exhaust itself. So, parasympathetic nervous system kind of helps the body to cool down and come back to the normal position and uh, controls the non-emergency functions and conserves body resources such as slows, heart beats and so on. So, sympathetic nervous system will <coughs> arouse or you know increase the heart beat, parasympathetic will decrease. So, it both sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system works in coordination. Without parasympathetic nervous system probably will not be able to come back to the normal position. So, both are very significant. So, as we have already seen almost all emotions are associated with this, this activation of sympathetic nervous system. So, it activates the body and prepares the body to kind of deal with the situation. So, let us uh, look more into this uh, autonomic nervous system because, it, uh, because this is central to uh, understanding emotions. So, it is a component of peripheral nervous system as we have already seen. It regulates all the uh, involuntary physiological processes such as heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, digestion, sexual arousal, etcetera. So, all the automatic functions that are kind of done, which are which, which does not require your conscious intervention are all you know, influenced by or kind of controlled by autonomic nervous system. So, autonomic nervous system again has as we have said sympathetic and parasympathetic as we have already discussed. This system is made up of neurons means nerve cells uh, that stretch from spinal cord to organs including your heart, lungs, stomach, intestines, genitals and even the smooth muscles surrounds your arteries. So, spinal cord say yes branch okay. it, it, it goes as a branch from the spinal cord to the different vital organs of the body and this is how it controls. So, then it uh, you know passes message from brain to the different organs. Uh, so, this is how it is kind of connect, uh, the positioned. Sympathetic part of it as we have already discussed, it activates the body system. It activates and helps the body prepare for intense activity by shifting resources away from digestion, reproduction and maintenance. So, whenever there is an intense arousal in the body, all the energy will go away from some of the vital functions. For example, uh, whenever you get highly physiologically activated or you are very nervous or you are very fearful, one thing you we all might have noticed that you know uh, that your there will be problems in your digestions, 
uh, there will be you know uh, problems in, uh, in, 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 in kind of all the energy that are for example, going in the digestion in the stomach area, it will be put into some other places to just deal with the situation. So, reproductive function, sexual ex as, uh, no, uh, arousal and so on, all these things will decrease whenever you are very emotional in certain aspects. So, the energy is kind of diverted to other aspects of the uh, functions which are required. So, sympathetic nervous system controls fight or flight response as we have seen whenever there is a dangerous danger in the situation, our body becomes gets more energy and it becomes more activated uh, either to fight with the situation or run away whatever you decide according to the situation. So, fight or flight response is primarily done because of the sympathetic nervous system. So, the effects of sympathetic nervous system arousal prepares the body for intense muscular activity, especially during dangerous stressful situation. Uh, this was defined by Walter Cannon. We have already discussed a theory of emotion by Walter Cannon. Uh, he used this term first time called fight or flight response in 1930s uh, to refer to this effect of ner sympathetic nervous system which prepares the body for fight with the enemy or run for life. So, this is this um, primarily this is what happens. Sympathetic nervous system also helps the body to provide necessary resources for fight and flight, extra energy will get, you, you will get lot of extra energy. So, you might have noticed whenever there is a danger in the situation, suddenly your energy level goes very high, you might be suddenly, you are feeling very sleepy in a certain moment, suddenly some danger comes, you will see the body is flooded with energy, from where this energy is coming, it is provided by the sympathetic nervous system. So, because of the, fun, uh, the ex activity, the, there is more blood circulation providing more oxygen and glucose to the muscles to get more energy, increasing heartbeat rate, respiration rate, sweating to cool the body. All these are happening just to prepare you and fight with the situation. Parasympathetic nervous system uh, is just does the opposite function, but in a complementary effect. So, opposite, but complementary because without this other will exhaust you. So, this kind of you know, helps you to cool down and uh, you know, come back to the normal position. So, the function is opposite, but it is complementary because it is necessary. Otherwise, uh, human beings will or animals will not be able to function. Effects of sympathetic nervous system such as slowing down the heartbeat and respiration. So, it slows down. Sympathetic increases their activity, parasympathetic decreases their activity. So, parasympathetic nervous system is a network of nerve that relaxes your body after stressful and dangerous situation. So, generally after some type of stress, your body will come down to the normal position and it is basically done by this parasympathetic nervous system. It also aids in the operation of life sustaining function. Now, parasympathetic nervous system is necessary for digestion when you are safe and comfortable. This system uh, so informal description include relax and digest or feed and breed. So, it helps you all the all the fun other important functions when you are relaxed and comfortable like digestion of the food and so on. So, when you are very nervous, your digestion suffers, your body cannot digest food. We all might have noticed it whenever you are very stressed and so on, you are no you do not feel like eating. So, one of the reason is that you know all the energies are kind of going into some other places. So, when you are relaxed and uh, you know uh, in a peaceful state, uh, you can digest much better way, your body because it is functioning at its best, uh, all the energies are going for all these vital functions. Uh, so, parasympathetic nervous system helps in all these life sustaining important functions. So, it is also called as you know. Uh, with the, with the phrases like relax and digest, feed and breed, all these things are kind of uh, done by parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system balances sympathetic nervous system. So, this is how it does in a complementary function. While a sympathetic nervous system controls fight and flight response, parasympathetic nervous system controls body's response during time of rest. When we are restful, all the other important functions are controlled by parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system sends message that alerts your body system, while parasympathetic nervous system sends signal that restores those system to normal activity level. So, the signals are very different. 
when safe and survival are th when safety and survival are threatened sympathetic nervous system takes over so both functions like this when situation is dangerous sympathetic will take over the fun take over the body and its action and can strain body system if activated for a very long time obviously when a sympathetic nervous system is activated for a long time it can exhaust you and it can be very dangerous for your system so these two system kind of counteract one another and help to restore body's uh, balance so you can see just uh, some of the through this diagram some of the different functions you can see most of these function are opposite to each other so this is your spinal cord this is your brain so from spinal cord different nerves goes to different vital organs and uh, th this is how signal goes from brain to different parts of the uh, and this is how they control all this so sympathetic nervous system uh, is basically uh, does all this dilation of pupil so your eyes will become much more wide open saliva is inhibited so your mouth becomes dry when you are very stressful you know all these things heart rate increases stomach inhibit digestion is also compromised you are not able to digest food liver releases glucose to increase the energy intestines inhibit digestion kidneys releases more adrenaline to give you more energy etc you know reproductive system decreases blood flow and so on so sexual arousal and all these thing will decrease when you are very stressful similarly the opposite functions are done in parasympathetic divisions where pupil contracts your eyes becomes wider or pupil of the eye becomes wider or dilates in parasympathetic it constricts in parasympathetic also nervous system uh, also kind of helps you to produce saliva in the mouth heart rate slows stomach digestion gets much better intestine digests etc the reproductive system increases blood flow and so on so kind of opposite functions so let us see how some of the important hormones that are associated with uh, emotions hormones are basically you know uh, very important uh, you know component for controlling body's activity and these are also very strongly associated with mental experiences and emotion so hormones plays very vital role in controlling body's activity and emotions hormones are basically chemicals these are certain chemicals that are secreted by glands so there are a lot of glands in our system for example pancreas is a gland you know so there are thyroid gland so there are <coughs> adrenal glands so there are different glands which does very important vital functions in the body if any of these glands becomes malfunctional you can have lot of problems so so like pancreas secretes insulin so there is if there are problems in the pancreas diabetes can happen so because insulin is related to controlling the body sugar level and so on so all these glands plays very important vital functions of the body and uh, they control all these vital functions through secretion of hormones in the blood so these are carried through blood stream and communicate with other organs in the body so these hormones goes in the blood and then they communicate with the different parts of the body and this is how holistically body functions endocrine system includes glands such as hypothalamus pituitary gland thyroid gland adrenal gland pancreas and gonads so these are all different examples of endocrine glands and all these glands secretes hormones in the blood and these are all important for functioning of the body this hormone influences diverse physiological functions pancreas as i have already said produces and releases hormone insulin which causes cell uh, throughout the body to take more glucose as a source of energy so sugar level in the body is also connected basically connected to that hypothalamus is located in the brain it is responsible for releasing hormones that regulate hunger thirst body temperature emotional response such as aggression and pleasure so very vital functions if the hypothalamus is not functioning probably will not be able to experience hunger thirst and so on so these are very important functions pituitary gland which is also called as a master gland also located in the brain releases hormones 
that controls growth and metabolism. So, your growth of the body, metabolism of the body is controlled by pituitary gland. It also uh, is important for emotions such as stress and anxiety. Whenever we experience this uh, gland is also important in terms of releasing hormones during those emotions. So, you can see some of this positioning of some of this gland. So, you can see hypothalamus is in the somewhere in the brain, some of the central part of the brain. Uh, pituitary gland because this is there are two sections of the brain, left brain, right brain. So, that is why you know a lot of these organs are kind of bilateral in the both side of the brain they will have they are present. So, the hypothalamus is somewhere here. Uh, so, this is uh, pituitary gland just below that this is pituitary gland. Thyroid gland is somewhere in the throat part of your body. Here you can see adrenal glands are just you know above the kidneys. So, that is why it is called adrenal, renal means kidney. So, it is connecting to the kidney. So, this so th there are two adrenal glands in both sides of the both sides of the kidney as are connected to adrenal glands. Pancreas is somewhere here, here testis, ovaries and so on. So, these are some of the important glands and their positions in the body. There are some hormones which are very strongly associated with emotions. So, one is called adrenaline. We all might have heard this term no adrenaline rush. Uh, people use this in the layman context also when people are very activated and want to do some of the you know high energy act activities when people do it we, we say no this is person is under adrenaline rush. So, adrenaline is a hormone which is secreted by adrenal gland. So, it is a hormone that is released during very stressful situations when your body requires very lot of extra energy you know whenever you go, go through lot of stressful situation adrenaline are released. It increases heart rate, blood pressure, muscle tensions cause a dilation of bronchi and pupils and so on. Along with high levels of dopamine and no norepinephrine adrenaline is responsible for feeling associated with love. It's also it also has some association or in the experience of love as an emotion. So, adrenaline is secreted by the central nervous system. Central nervous system sends the signals to the adrenal gland and it has a short duration about 2 minutes. So, it kind of within 2 minutes it gets secreted in the body. Adrenaline rush may manifest as a sense of anxiety, nervousness or an intense excitement as both your body and mind gets ready for an upcoming event. So, a lot of highly exciting event whenever we do lot of this adrenal may get released in your body. So, there is an another hormone that which is called as cortisol is also connected to the stress or anxiety as an emo whenever we experience those uh, you know, state of mind. So, cortisol is a steroid hormone that is released during times of stress to provide energy similar to adrenaline. Adrenaline the functions are very similar, uh, but the way they released a little bit of different mechanism are there. When a person experiences stress, their cortisol level increases and this hormone has been linked to negative emotions. So, particularly whenever we experience a lot of negative emotions including uh, a lot of stress, anxiety and so on, generally cortisol gets released. In addition, this is again cortisol is again connected to adrenal gland, we will see the mechanisms of release of it. In addition, those with the Cushing syndrome, a condition characterized by excess, excessive cortisol secretion. So, the, in this syndrome, in this particular disorder, uh, excessive cortisol gets secre secreted in the body. Uh, people often suffer from depressed mood, which can uh, improve when their elevated cortisol levels are treat treated. So, a treatment, one of the treatment associated for this kind of condition is this elevated cortisol level, uh, they try to decrease them with that decrease of cortisol levels a lot of the symptoms get also uh, you know, treated. So, again the, the physiological mechanisms are very complex. So, we will not go into all the details. The primary function of cortisol is to increase energy availability in the body by raising blood glucose levels. So, glucose level is glucose is for energy you know. So, it raises the glucose level to give you more energy. Uh, so, that is what the main function just like the adrenaline does. So, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, we will just look how where it lies uh, is 
it which regulates cortisol production responds to a range of physiological and psychological challenges some of which may not result in negative emotions such as waking up in the morning or physical exercise. So, the idea is conversely there are many experiences that are associated with negative emotion uh, do not lead to increase in cortisol. So, the idea is the relationship between uh, cortisol release and negative emotion may not be so simple. So, it depends on lot of context. So, for example, viewing highly unpleasant picture can elicit negative emotions, but it may not typically lead to cortisol release. Uh, similarly, experiencing panic which is characterized by intense negative emotion may or may not be accompanied by elevated cortisol level. So, it depends on lot of things. So, the relationship is very complex. So, if you see this uh, kind of pathways how adrenaline and cortisols are related to stressful situations or especially the negative emotions. So, whenever we experience stress or very um, high intense negative emotions there are two pathways that happens. One pathway is we experience stress and uh, very negative emotion, it will lead to activate hypothalamus. So, this is in the, this, in the center of the brain, there is a small <coughs> organ which is called as hypothalamus. So, it activates this hypothalamus, this hypothalamus then activates autonomic nervous system, sympathetic part of it which arouses the body as we have already discussed. Now, this auto sympathetic nervous system activates adrenal medulla. So, medulla means the central part. So, this is the adrenal gland which is touching the kidney. So, this is kidney and this is adrenal gland. So, every gland has, so this is outer part is called cortex this inner part is called as medulla. So, this sympathetic nervous system activates this inner part called medulla and this inner part secretes this one adrenaline or these are collectively also called as you know, catecholamines. So, this, this part releases adrenaline the center part or medulla part. Now, this adrenaline when released in the blood, it does all this function increases cardiovascular response, respiration, perspiration, blood flow to the active muscles and so on. So, it activates the body. So, all the typical symptoms of sympathetic nervous system. So, sympathetic nervous system, this is the mechanism, it actually activates the adrenal medulla part and that ultimately releases the adrenaline gland, which adrenaline hormone, which ultimately causes all the symptoms. So, this is one pathway. Another pathway which happens simultaneously is that when we experience stress and negative emotions, it also activates pituitary gland. Again, it is also somewhere in the center part of the brain, another gland. This pituitary gland some completely another pathway it takes, it releases a hormone which is called as ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. So, this pituitary gland in the brain releases this hormone. This hormone then activates adrenal cortex. So, this adrenal gland has outer layer which is called as cortex. This outer layer is called as cortex. This outer layer secretes cortisol, inner layer secretes adrenaline. So, both are actually released by adrenal gland. One is released by cortex part that is why it is named as cortisol adrenal is uh, secreted by the medulla or inner part of the adrenal gland. Cortisol again does this increase mobilization of protein and fat, increase access to energy storage, decrease inflammation. So, it is also again kind of helps to activate the body in certain ways. So, these are the two pathways that are simultaneously happens when we experience stress and negative emotions and it leads to all these physiological changes in the body. So, hypothalamus is somewhere in the center of the brain in the context of stress response, it activates two pathways we have already discussed. One pathway is called SAM pathway, sympathetic adrenal medullary system. So, this part is called as SAM, SAM pathway, sympathetic adrenal medullary pathway, so, because adrenal medullary pathway, 
and another is called hypothalamic pituitary adrenocorticoid system. This is called as HPA pathway. So, this part is called as called as HPA. So, these two pathways are responsible for all kinds of changes. So, one pathway releases cortisol, another pathway leads to adrenaline or non adrenaline another which is another hormones functions are very similar. So, same pathway does whatever we have seen, uh, it, it leads to release of adrenaline, catecholamines, adrenaline is one of them and the blood stream releases, it increases heartbeat, blood pressure and so on. HPA pathway also leads to release of cortisol which uh, does uh, you know, influences metabolism, storage of fats, immune functions and so on. Generally the HPA pathway is slower, slower it may takes around 30 minutes. So, this is kind of slower pathway. So, this pathway is slower, this is uh, kind of slower pathway, it may take 30 minutes. This pathway is fast, within a minute it will happen. So, this happens very fast, this may take some time. So, if stress remains for long time, this pathway is more active. If stress is for a very short duration, this pathway becomes more active. So, this is how you know these two hormones are related to particularly stress and negative emotions. Dopamine and serotonin we will also discuss more in the next lecture, but little bit here because uh, dopamine uh, and serotonin is mostly released in the body itself, dopamine is mostly in the brain. So, these are called as happy hormones, you know our happiness kind of lot of it of it depends on dopamine and serotonin as a hormone. They enhance our sense of mental wellness or positive emotional experiences. Dopamine is related to brain's reward function mechanisms. It induces pleasurable sensations. So, whenever we experience pleasure and happiness, mostly it is connected to the release of dopamine. On the other hand, serotonin can mitigate feelings of depression and anxiety. So, depression and anxiety may generally uh, it is the less serotonin causes it. So, in lot of depression cases, serotonin has been found to be very less. So, the presence of serotonin enhances your mood, leading to increased happiness and so on. Okay. So, both kind of functions in a similar way, little bit of differences are there, uh, but these are kind of happy hormones contribute to our positive emotions and happiness. More specifically, serotonin is linked to feeling of happiness, focus and calmness. Dopamine is linked to more motivational and rewards. Whenever we get some positive reward system, it activates certain pleasurable sensation. So, the dopamine and serotonin both play roles in mental health issues such as depression and mood disorders may in both of these hormones has very strong roles to play. Mostly, they are the release is somehow restricted in case of major depression, depressive patients or people with mood disorders. So, they are kind of become imbalance, imbalances in these two hormones can be uh, one of the major reasons of mood disorders and depression. So, dopamine and serotonin have distinct function also, some differences are also there. So, dopamine regulates movement and coordination, serotonin aids in the regulation of digestive functions such as bowel functions and hunger. This is apart from that happiness uh, the, or the positive emotions. Dopamine stimulates appetite, but serotonin decreases it. So, these are some of the difference in the subtle functioning also. Uh, so, dopamine uh, you know, increases appetite, but serotonin decreases. Dopamine generally is present in the brain mostly, whereas serotonin is mostly present in the gut or intestine. So, some, some uh, little differences are here and there. So, we will talk more about dopamine and serotonin in the when we talk in the context of brain of emotions and brain. So, little bit more detail we will talk there because these are very important uh, hormones. Uh, the, then comes the estrogen and testosterone are also very important hormones in the body released in the body which has some connection with the different emotional experiences. So, according to research estrogen levels have a positive impact on mood. So, again uh, just like uh, others also estrogen seems to have a positive impact on mood with higher levels particularly beneficial. So, with higher level of estrogen uh, people generally have you no know, experiences better mood. 
Conversely, sudden drop in estrogen level can lead to symptoms of depression. So, if the if the uh, the level of these hormones suddenly decreases or decreases for whatever reasons, one may experience depression like symptoms. Now, estrogen are basically you know uh, uh, mostly you know it is more uh, present or more functional in the female body. So, fluctuations in the estrogen level uh, rather than absolute level some research indicate that have an effect on the mood. So, a lot of mood swings can happen if there are fluctuations in the estrogen level. This explains why women experiences mood swings during pu puberty and menopause when this estrogen level you know, fluctuates very strongly, uh, when estrogen levels very dramatically changes and uh, why mood disorders are less common during times when estrogen levels are consistently low such as childhood and post menopause. When this is not much present then the mood issues are not much there. So, when it is present uh, but it fluctuates then it causes lot of swings in the mood. So, Testosterone is another hormone that are mostly you know related to you know testes releases it, ovary also releases estrogen. Uh, so, testosterone is typically male hormones, uh, uh, male reproductive organ basically testes releases it more. So, it also affects emotion in so many ways, uh, it is important for uh, in, the, in the promotion of sexual desire in both men and women, but it is less in women, more in male it is present. Uh, it is also uh, has a mood enhancing effect for men when the testosterone level is high it can also have a positive impact on the mood similar to estrogen for women. So, est whatever estrogen does to women similarly testosterone does to the men. So, but these effects are not yet fully understood I mean, researchers are going on people uh, because physiologic is very complex you know we kind of understanding more and more, but still it is not a complete understanding. For the testosterone has been suggested as a possible contributor to anger on excision. So, this hormone has also been linked to anger and aggression. So, people who have probably higher quantity of testosterone, they may be also more aggressive also. So, there is a, some research connects to aggression also with testosterone. So, although the evidence is not always consistent. So, with this, uh, this so, so these are basically some of the hormones which are significant associated with emotions in the body uh, and uh, they have you know uh, plays major role in the shifting of the mental experiences and emotions also. So, with this I will end here and tomorrow we will talk about uh, how what changes happens in the brain particularly brain chemistry we will look at it in the context of emotions. So, with this I stop here thank you. Mm -hmm.